rise today to discuss the ongoing crisis in Venezuela. With so many crises happening around the globe these days, political turmoil in Venezuela has slipped from the headlines and sometimes seems easy to forget. But the situation commands our attention. In Venezuela, the protests against oppression go on with 6,369 recorded rallies this year, the most in over a decade. When Hugo Chavez's death was confirmed 15 months ago, there were hopes that his hand-picked successor, Nicolas Maduro, would prove more moderate and friendly to the United States. These hopes quickly proved groundless as Maduro doubled down on his predecessor's disastrous socialist economic policies and its close partnership with Castro's Cuba, not to mention Khamenei's Iran. Earlier this year, as Venezuela endured shortages of basic goods from baby formulas to caskets, from beginning of life to end, and everything in between, while an increasingly authoritarian regime trampled their constitutional rights, the people finally took to the streets to protest Maduro's corrupt and unjust rule. Demanding freedom, they marched peaceably while Maduro's Cuban-trained militia tried to incite violence. Following the wide-ranging protests, of February 12, 2014, Maduro's regime claimed that opposition leaders were personally responsible for the violence that Maduro's regime had deliberately provoked. Six days later, the leader of the Voluntad Popular Party, Leopoldo Lopez, demonstrated his respect for rule of law when he voluntarily surrendered to the authorities. He could have stayed in hiding. He could have gone into exile. But he believed that it was only through taking action that change can come to Venezuela. Here, here is Mr. Lopez. As he surrendered to the authorities to be thrown in prison, hundreds of thousands of supporters accompanied him to the police van. Mr. Lopez has been held in the Ramo Verde military prison ever since. In early June, a judge ordered him held for trial, which will begin this week. His wife, Lillian Tintori, is here in Washington today to draw attention to his case. She spoke at the National Press Club powerfully about how she and her children have missed their daddy, have missed Leopoldo while he's been in prison, but they know that their daddy is doing what he must to fight for the men and women of Venezuela. Maduro's so-called evidence against Mr. Lopez, includes the claim that he was somehow sending secret, subliminal messages inciting violence when he, in fact, explicitly called on his followers to protest peacefully. Let me repeat that. Mr. Lopez explicitly asked his followers to protest peacefully against the oppressive regime of Maduro. And what does Maduro say? That apparently Leopoldo has the power to subliminally suggest violence when his words say, don't engage in violence. This would be comical and absurd were it not the basis for an indictment that Maduro is seeking to lock Leopoldo up for 10 years in prison for daring to speak out against oppression. And it's important to understand the trial scheduled this week is no trial in the ordinary term. 
There will be no jury. There will be no evidence for the defense. Now, not for lack of trying. Mr. Lopez is denied any opportunity to refute these bogus charges about his supposed subliminal powers because Mr. Lopez's defense team asked to submit the testimony of 60 witnesses. The trial court denied all 60, said no witnesses will be allowed for the defense. Mr. Lopez's team asked to submit 13 videos. The trial court denied all 13. Mr. Lopez's defense team asked to submit the testimony of 12 experts. The trial court denied all 12. So in this so-called trial, which is nothing but a sham, the defense will have no evidence because the trial court has already decided they will allow no evidence in support of someone speaking for freedom, someone speaking for the people. The evidence will be kept out of this show trial. That's not an unusual pattern. Dictators, totalitarian regimes from Stalin to Castro throughout the ages have engaged in the same show trials that they use to brutally silence any who would dare to speak out against them. The undeniable fact is that Nicolas Maduro has no interest in justice in this case or in the nation of Venezuela. The official charges are public incitement, property damage, and criminal conspiracy. But Mr. Lopez's real crime is quite simply the exercise of his right provided by Article 57 of the Constitution of Venezuela, which states, quote, everyone has the right to express freely his or her thoughts, ideas, or opinions orally, in writing, or by any other form of expression and to use for such purpose any means of communication and diffusion, and no censorship shall be established. That's what the Constitution of Venezuela says. But Nicolas Maduro says Leopoldo Lopez goes to prison and wants him to stay there for 10 years because he spoke out and spoke the truth. Mr. Lopez freely expressed his criticism of Maduro's failed leadership. And for that, he's been unceremoniously thrown into jail and faces a sham trial that could rob his four-year-old daughter, his one-year-old son, of having a daddy for the next decade. As Lillian, his wife, wrote today in the Washington Post, quote, no one should doubt why Leopoldo is in prison. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro is afraid of him, and he has good reason to be. Chavez did not deliver, and Maduro has not delivered on their promises. And they have systematically dismantled our fundamental freedoms. Free speech, freedom of association, freedom of the press, and freedom to vote for candidates of our choosing the most basic foundational human rights for advocating for those Leopoldo Lopez is in prison. Every American should take an interest in Mr. Lopez's fate. Not only is he a good friend to our country, having attended both Kenyon College and Harvard, but he also advocates the sort of political and economic reforms that would return Venezuela to its historic place as a close partner to the United States, a development that would be of great advantage here in our own hemisphere. Mr. Lopez's case also reminds us of the precious freedoms that we enjoy in the United States that can all too quickly be taken away. Article 57 should have particular resonance for us 
as our right to free speech is enshrined in the First Amendment of our Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to as peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. There is a reason the framers chose this subject for the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. Because upon these rights, all of our liberties are built. No freedom is more vital to true democracy than the freedom to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience and the freedom to speak as we choose without government censors. For when they, these freedoms are restricted, citizens lose their ability to express their opposition to the government. As Venezuela shows us, this process can take place slowly, over time, but the eventual result is that a citizen who speaks out is silenced and punished. I have to say, Leopoldo Lopez's situation is one that has resonance in my family. Fifty-seven years ago, my father was in a prison in another Latin American country, the country of Cuba. My dad was 17 when he was imprisoned and tortured in a Cuban jail. Leopoldo is 43, the very same age I am today. And Leopoldo Lopez's case is unfortunately not an isolated case in Maduro's Venezuela. 46 people have been killed. Thousands have been detained. And more than 100 are still in prison. His fellow opposition leader, Maria Corino Machado, recently discovered that she too had been charged last month with incitement to violence related to the February protests. She had never been informed there was a criminal case against her, and now she faces potentially six years in prison as well. Maduro's actions are those of a dictator who knows that he is deeply unpopular, that his policies are a dismal failure, and that to survive, he has to silence the voices of those who oppose him and offer a viable alternative, who oppose him and offer freedom. The people of Venezuela showed in February that they are ready for a change from the long slog into totalitarian socialism that was begun by Chavez and is being continued by Maduro. Now Maduro is trying to use a cloud of censorship to isolate Venezuelans from each other and from the rest of the world. We should not look the other way. Again, from Lillian's Washington Post op-ed today, quote, we need to send a message to the government that it cannot trample the rights of its people with impunity. Accordingly, I call on President Maduro to release my husband and the more than 100 political prisoners being held in Venezuela. But my actions alone are not enough. My husband needs the support of all countries that stand for freedom. In this, Mr. President, the United States should lead the way. America should speak with a clarion voice. Free Leopoldo Lopez. As the hashtag SOS Venezuela has rocketed around the globe, it shows the power of speaking the truth. Free Leopoldo Lopez. The United States should do everything we can to shine the bright light of truth and freedom on this repression by highlighting Leopoldo Lopez's case. President Obama should stand up and lead, demanding the freedom of Leopoldo Lopez. Secretary Kerry should stand up and lead, demanding the freedom of Leopoldo Lopez. 
every member of this body should join together in bipartisan unison demanding the freedom of Leopoldo Lopez. We should not and cannot let this unjust persecution pass unnoticed, but rather we should help the people of Venezuela choose a different path, a path of freedom, a path of prosperity, and a path of friendship that will return this one-time enemy, the nation of Venezuela, to its traditional role of America's partner and friend. Mr. President, all of us should join together demanding and working for the freedom of Leopoldo Lopez. Thank you.